see it. Now, now it says that. Okay, so Laura is going to be cooking creamy lemon orzo with chickpeas and broccoli. So I'm going to turn it over to Laura. Okay, great. Thank you, Annie. So my name is Laura Wright. I live in Welland and I, um, I develop vegan recipes on my blog. And I also have a cookbook called The First Mess. It's the same name as my blog. Um, and the recipe we're making today, I kind of, my theme for these recipes was like kind of comfort food that's also easy enough to fix up. Like it's not like a multi-hour project. And of course we only have so much time with this Zoom cooking thing too, right? Um, but I think sometimes we just like kind of want something comforting that's also a little weeknight friendly. And also everything I'm making, just like my blog and my book, everything is vegan, but it's, it does not sacrifice flavor or anything like that ever. So today's recipe is based with orzo, which is a rice shaped pasta. I use this a lot in my cooking. Like it cooks quickly. It's very versatile. We love pasta. It's just so good. Um, but in this dish, it kind of gets super creamy with broccoli. We add chickpeas for a bit of protein and it's just lovely. And it's like pretty simple ingredients, comes together quick enough. So I think we can just get started on everything. Oh. If everyone's okay with that. I got a question. Yep. Sure. Um, do we need to take notes or is the recipe available? The recipe is available on my website. Um, okay. I think I did send the link to Annie, but if we need to somehow send the link out to people afterwards, that's no problem. I can. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So I did forward it actually to the other libraries, but maybe they didn't send it out, but I can resend it to them. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. So the first thing we have to do with this recipe, because it is a creamy lemon orzo and because I am vegan, so I don't really consume cream. The way we make this creamy is with raw cashews. I have soaked these for a few hours. I'm gonna combine these raw cashews with water and a little bit of nutritional yeast, which I'll talk about in a second. I'm gonna combine these with water to make our cream that we pour in at the end and it just makes the texture so unbelievably rich like people would swear there's dairy in it but there definitely isn't it's just the nuts and water so i have my blender pitcher here and i'm just going to start mixing that i have a quarter cup of raw cashews there and then this is a third of a cup of water that i'll just put in and now i'm adding nutritional yeast so nutritional yeast is an inactive yeast it's used like as a spice or a seasoning very common in vegan cooking some people say it has a cheesy flavor. I don't think it's cheesy outright. It's very savory. Cheesy, I think is a bit of a stretch, but it's very savory and it adds like just that depth of flavor that sometimes vegan foods can be lacking because there is no animal products. So we are going to add that to the blender with our cashews and water, just to give us a really nice kind of flavor boost from the start. So I'm just using a tablespoon of that. And that's just going to go in. And it just kind of looks like little flakes. I don't know how to describe it. It's very, it's really good on popcorn too. Like it's just, it's very versatile. So I'm going to put the lid on this. I'm going to see if I can mute this while I have the blender on because I'm just going to mute it for a second while I blend and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have blended it. It's very smooth. And I'll pour it out here so we can just see what it looks like. It's super thick and creamy. And we're just gonna put this aside. We use it right at the very end. So I'm just gonna put that to the side here and it'll be back. And now we can actually start on the dish. So I have a little plug-in element here that I'm just gonna put the plug-in for. So I turn this on. 
to medium. I'm just gonna get this skillet kind of hot. The first step, I will sear the broccoli a bit first just to get a head start on it because you know you want like a little bit of like caramelization and browning on the broccoli that's going to build flavor from the start. I just get that seared really lightly just so it starts to soften and then I transfer it back to the container. It'll keep cooking as it sits and then I'll start building the orzo in the pan and then we just add it back in at the end. So to cook that, I'm just gonna get some olive oil in my pan. I have this pan on medium. Just gonna put that in. And we'll spread around. It's good. This is about four cups of broccoli florets, roughly a bunch that you would find at a grocery store. There might be a bit more. I just wanted to use all of it, so it's all there. And I have it just spread out in a single layer. So it's all browning at the same rate. <coughs> Usually takes I don't know, about five minutes or so. And also as I'm just doing this stuff, if anybody thinks of any questions or like, you know, you just want to shout out like an observation or anything, just don't hesitate. Like anything goes. One thing I will say, if you don't like broccoli, this dish is really great with other vegetables, like in season when there's asparagus, it's great. Um, I make a version with butternut squash, which is that season's coming up, it's quite good. Um, very versatile, very flexible. Can everyone hear me okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you're good. I think you're good. We're good. Okay, okay, good. So it's sizzling. I'm just going to give the broccoli a little season with salt and pepper. Just to build some of the flavor right away. Good. Also, this is like this recipe. I kind of chose this one because it is very hard to mess it up. Like that was one of my fears going into this class. So it's like if you know the pasta doesn't cook at the right rate, you just add a bit more liquid, it'll be fine. If it's tasting kind of uh, like a little hot sauce, add a bit more lemon, it'll be fine. Super flexible. It's starting to get really bright green. Not quite there yet for me, but it is, we're about halfway, I would say. Okay, I think this looks good and I'm going to be placing it back into this container. So as it sits like all on top of each other, it's going to steam a bit more. Probably get right to the point where we need it. So I'm going to take it out. Okay, great. 
So I'm just gonna set that aside. We'll add it back in at the end. So now we're going to start cooking the actual base of the orzo. So we're gonna add a little bit more olive oil to get everything started. And here I have one shallot that I've minced up. I did this one ahead of time because every time I mince shallots, I just start crying. It just brings tears to my eyes, they're so strong. So you kind of want this on, I have it a bit too hot. You need it probably more like medium low. There are, there's not a ton of ingredients in this dish. So I find with the shallots, I like to really cook them, like really thoroughly cook out any rawness to get all of the flavor extracted out of them. They will turn almost kind of sweet if given like the full amount of time to develop flavor. So if I start seeing any browning on these kind of prematurely, I will just lower the heat again. Right now I think we're okay, but while that's working, I am going to mince some garlic. I have two cloves of garlic that I'm just going to mince here. Good, and while I'm doing that, I'm just stirring these. Great. I also have the leaves from some fresh thyme. It's about three sprigs. I'm going to mince those along with the garlic as well, because we add them at the same time. So I just might as well do it together. I love, this is kind of like a very lemon focused kind of dish. And I love thyme and lemon together. They just complement each other so well. Okay, these are looking pretty good. I'm going to add my garlic and thyme to the pan. And they only need to go for about 30 seconds. Garlic can burn pretty quickly. So just get that in there. And then there's also, this is an optional ingredient, but I'm gonna use some ground up chili because I just like a little heat just to balance things out, not to make it hot necessarily, but just to balance out the flavor with all the lemon and everything else we have going on. So I'm just adding a little bit of that. So the garlic is very fragrant now. The last thing I wanna add to this is the zest from the lemon. So I have this grater here, it's a microplane. It gets really fine lemon zest. I find most of the flavor of the lemon is actually in the peel. So I've washed this and all of like the oils of the lemon are in that. So that's gonna add to the nice kind of fresh lemony flavor that we have going on. Great. And now I'm going to add the orzo. So I'm gonna put all of that in. This is a half a pound of orzo or 227 grams. And I'm just tossing it in that kind of oil, shallot, spice mixture just to coat all of the grains really nicely. Well, they're not grains, but the pieces of pasta, I'm just coating it really nice in all of that. And we're kind of toasting it in the pan a little bit too, which adds a little bit more flavor. And then I have one and a half cups of already cooked chickpeas that I've drained and rinsed. So I'm going to add those as well. And this kind of bumps up the protein in our meal a bit. I know that is a concern for a lot of people eating, you know, a vegan recipe or trying a plant-based meal for the first time. They really wanna make sure there's enough protein in there and this definitely looks after that. Okay, so this is good. 
I will give this just a little bit of salt and pepper. Most of the seasoning on this dish, I will adjust at the end. But for now, we'll just kind of build that into the base and stir it up. Okay, and then we are going to add some vegetable stock. This is two cups of vegetable stock that I will pour in. I'll give it a little stir. And then from here, I am going to bring this mixture up to a boil and then we'll lower to a simmer. And then we're just going to keep simmering this until the little bits of orzo puff up and soak up all of that vegetable stock and it gets like just soft enough. And then from there, we just really simply finish the dish with the broccoli, we add some herbs, we add that cream that we made earlier um, and we'll plate it up and I'll show you what it looks like. But for now, we're just waiting for this. It's pretty simple though. Most of the action happens in one pan. And if you're feeling kind of, you know, like I feel lazy some nights when I'm cooking. If you're feeling lazy and you don't want to make a full cashew cream to add to this, sometimes I'll just buy an unsweetened um, non-dairy like creamer or just a non-dairy milk, like an unsweetened soy milk. And I will add that at the end instead of making it myself. Or if I forget to soak the cashews because they do need a bit of time with that. Amazing. So I guess this is the time, this is kind of a waiting game now. So if anyone has any questions or if people like just about vegan cooking or cooking in general, or if you know you just want to like talk about cooking and stuff, like we can do that, you know? It's very, <laughs> very free format. Ask me anything. I I love it. Or if you're cooking along and like you missed a step or something, just let me know. I can get you back up to speed, no problem. <laughs> Everyone's so quiet. Yeah, this gang, this group is very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Anyone? Okay, hey, Laura, I have a question. I have a question. Sure. Um, do you always cook your own chickpeas? They no. weren't canned. Okay. These were canned. These were actually, they, they came from a can and I rinsed them. It's just, I got all my stuff ready before we started. Okay. Um, but I use, I try to cook the dry ones a lot because I find the texture is a little bit nicer. Like I can just get it to where I want it. But I also like, I just have canned ones on hand in case I'm, I have not planned ahead and I don't have them cooked. Like mm -hmm. I just, you know, I think we all relate. Sometimes you just get in a jam. It's not, and they're fine. They're great. They're, yeah. like, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I cook with them all the time. They're great. So one thing I will note about this recipe before I get back to chickpea talk, um, the orzo in this recipe, as it's simmering, the orzo wants to stick to the bottom of the pot. Like it has that starch. It just desperately wants to stick to the bottom of the pot just you'll be stirring this one here and there just to make sure that's not happening but yeah other than that it kind of just takes care of itself but yeah I guess to answer your chickpea question I do both and there's no shame in it it's like whatever no. time constraints whatever you like to do whatever is easier for you that's the best thing to do okay and beans and legumes how long do they last in the fridge like I actually freeze them when I cook my own I will drain some of them I'll keep in liquid in my fridge if I'm going to use them that week so the bean cooking liquid I'll just submerge like, I'll have like a jar of cooked chickpeas I put some of the cooking liquid on top close the lid keep that in the fridge the rest of them I will drain and freeze in little one and a half cup portions in like a reusable bag or a freezer safe container and that's how I store most of my cooked beans like so when I run out of stash, it's usually I'm out of my freezer stash of beans and they hold up great. The texture is still great. There's no changes. I really recommend it. It makes the process a lot easier. If you're going to go to the work of cooking your own, okay. you might as well make a stockpile that you can turn to for a few months. Okay. And then any recipe that has got 
beans or legumes in it, how long can that stay in the fridge? How long can leftovers last? Oh, I find, okay, so usually if I've cooked a soup with beans, it always has onions in it. The main thing that is a concern if we're talking about like the longevity of leftovers is the onion. So you really want to make sure first that you're totally cooking out the onion, like no shred of rawness at all. That is a thing they teach in like food safety courses, like onions are often a culprit of foodborne illness. The second thing, once you've like taken care of that, I find if I make a bean based soup or a bean based like a maybe it's like a curry or something in my fridge. I will give it a maximum of three or four days in my fridge and then for freezing it in an air can airtight container, usually three months, I say is good. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I have a question about chickpeas. Yep. When you're, when you do them from dry, do they still have the skins on them? They will still have them. Okay. I know some people, one thing, oh, sorry, I will answer your question. Um, sometimes when I'm making this, like I made this in a wider pot than I normally would. So the liquid is evaporating kind of quickly. So I'm going to add just a splash of water or like if you have more vegetable stock, you could add it at this point. I just have to, one second. Um, to your question about the chickpeas and the skins, I still have the skins. They, like even when I cook them from scratch, they still have it. I know some people, if they make hummus from scratch, they swear if you peel the skins off of every chickpea, the hummus will be much smoother. I find that process very painstaking. That seems a little excessive to me, but no, like to the short answer for your question, like cooking from dried, unfortunately does not eliminate that slippy little skin. I know some people don't particularly love that. So Thank you. Sometimes I wonder if the freshness of the dried chickpeas themselves has something to do with whether that skin is a factor, but I'm not sure. Like I, I get chickpeas from this purveyor in BC and like they have a direct tie to the farm. They're pretty fresh and I still get the skin when I cook them, so. Thanks. So we're doing good. I would say the orzo is probably about halfway there. Takes about eight minutes altogether. One thing I know orzo in this area, I can only ever find orzo pasta at a couple grocery stores. Um, if you can't find it, you can use any smaller pasta. Like Didalini is a good one. Um, I've seen miniature penne regatte at some stores. I think that would be really cute. Um, it's pretty flexible as long as it's just a small shape that cooks in the area of eight to 10 minutes, you're fine. So would a pearl barley work? I, I'm not sure. How long does pearl barley usually take to cook? I haven't cooked with that. Yeah, while. I can't recall. I wonder, I feel like that would be wonderful in a recipe like this because it has that soft, starchy kind of texture. Mm -hmm. I think it would be delicious. I think it's like a par cooked pearl, bar well, pearl, like the outer is already taken off so it'll cook faster. I wonder, I think it would be delicious. And even if you had to par cook it a little bit before you started, that would be lovely. Laura, is the pasta not made with eggs? No, most packaged pasta I find is not made with eggs anymore. Like okay. the few brands that still use eggs will advertise on the package, like made with real eggs, or often when you see fresh pasta in a grocery store, that will have eggs for sure. But dried pasta, which is what I mostly use, um, I'll buy like DiCecco brand or Garofalo, and they're always just water and durum wheat semolina, that's it. Okay, and do you mind um, sharing where which grocery stores have the orzo? I have bought Orzo at the Niagara Street Zares. Um, the Garofalo brand is the only brand they have of Orzo there. Mm -hmm. And then Camizos, if I'm in Niagara Falls, um, Camizos has Orzo from multiple brands. They have, they have every type of pasta there usually, so. Thank you. 
I find orzo is really nice for making kind of a salad too. Like often I'll pre-cook it, cool it off, just toss in a simple kind of lemon dressing and I'll roast up little dices of vegetables, add a bunch of chopped herbs. If you eat cheese, you could crumble in like a soft cheese and that. It makes like a really nice little kind of salad. I was gonna say a summer salad, but summer's almost over, but you could still do it. And you can kind of see it because pasta is starchy and I, I just keep stirring this, I don't leave it alone. It's already getting kind of creamy and starchy even without adding the cream that we made. So we're just giving it a really good start. While we're waiting, I'm going to chop my parsley, which we just use at the end, but I just have some parsley from my garden that I will chop up. And you could use any herb really that you like, like basil would be really nice in this. Mix of parsley and basil. If you like cilantro, cilantro is great, chives. I have another question about the cashew cream. Yep. Um, I was a little glitchy at the beginning of the session when you were doing it. Okay. Um, could you just do a recap of, of what you did with that? Sure, no problem. So this, I soaked a quarter cup of raw cashews. Um, I find raw cashews is probably the best here because the flavor is much milder than a roasted cashew but I soaked a quarter cup of cashews for a few hours just to soften them up. And then I drain them and combine them in a blender with a third, a cup, third of a cup of water and a little bit of nutritional yeast, which is like our little super savory kind of spice that we added. Blended it until it was really smooth. And then that's what we ended up with. And I just kind of put it aside. We only added at the very end. So I just like to get it out of the way so that I have it ready when everything's all done. Thank you. And do you use the water, when you add the quarter cup of water, do you use the water that you soaked the cashews in for I extra don't. flavor or do you just use regular water? No, just regular water because sometimes with nuts, um, depending on like how they were packed and like other things in the environment, um, there's some sediment from other products on there. Um, the resulting, like the soaking water, it does not taste particularly great. I don't think it really adds anything. And like okay. with this, we're making a cream. So I just want it to be very neutral and mellow. So I just sure. use much water. And just subtle. Yeah. Now, if you wanted a nuttier taste, could you roast the cashews? You definitely could. And I think that would be delicious. Or you could just use pre-roasted cashews even. Like that would be great. Because sometimes when you go to a store, I find around here, I can only find roasted ones. And I think in okay. this situation, it would still be really good. Yeah, because I find um, I tend to roast my nuts, uh, any of them, just because it enriches the flavor. Oh yeah, I definitely will. Yeah. Like the caramelization. It's so good. Yeah. And you could even use, if you don't want to use cashews, like if you know someone with a nut allergy, I have done the same thing with raw sunflower seeds. Delicious. Still really good. Um, like a toasted pumpkin seed. That would be good. It's very, again, it's very flexible. So. And Laura, would all of the nuts be unsalted, of course? I prefer unsalted because like I like to control the amount of salt. But having said that, if you can only find salted, that's not a big deal. Like just keep tasting your food as you're making it. Um, maybe since you're adding this at the end, maybe just go light on salt at the beginning so that you can taste the final product and get a better sense of it. Um, I tend to like things a bit saltier, so that would not phase me. But yeah, like just be mindful. That's all. Okay. Well, because sometimes the vegetable broth can be, can have a high, like sodium too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. If you're buying it, like I usually, I try to make it, I don't always make it. 
but sometimes when you buy vegetable stock at the grocery store it is so salty it's mm -hmm. salty. I'm just going to taste a little piece of the orzo to see where it's at. It's pretty tender. I might give it a bit more time, but I think it's pretty much there. And of course, it will keep cooking after we add the broccoli. Even as it sits after you've served it, it's still absorbing the liquid. And when you make your veggie stock, do you have a certain recipe that you follow? Like sometimes what I do is I just put it, I keep in the freezer a bag. And every time I'm cooking with vegetables, I just put the pieces that you would normally put in the compost because I've already washed them. I put them in the freezer and then when my bag gets full, I just boil it down. I love that. I think that's great. That's a good zero waste strategy. I think that's great. For me, I do, I have like a certain method with vegetable stock and I do have the recipe actually in my cookbook, which I think is available at the library, but I try to stick to certain vegetables for mine just to increase its versatility in my dishes. Um, onions, carrots, celery, that's the core for me. I try to avoid anything um, strong, cruciferous tasting like broccoli or cabbage. I would never, I don't think I would ever use that unless I was specifically making like a cabbage soup or something. Um, yeah, the broccoli, like to, that's the problem with doing it that way is that it's just a collection of whatever you had, right? Right. And broccoli is such a staple that I end up with, it can have a stronger taste to it. And like, unless I'm using it for broccoli soup, then. For broccoli soup, Brilliant. But yeah. I do like to definitely saute the cut vegetables a little bit first in a bit of oil to get caramelization, which will build flavor in the stock. Sometimes oh, that's good stock, idea. you're kind of, you're lacking the depth that a meat stock would have, you know, so you kind of have to make up for it in other ways. And I do like to saute, get really brown edges on the onions before I add my water and scrape up the bottom of the pan to get all of that flavor. Um, I do like to use a lot of thyme and parsley. Those are my favorite herbs for stock. Um, a bay leaf, always garlic. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, it's simple, but just like taking my time with it. And I'll only simmer it for about 40 minutes. I won't go for like hours at a time. I think vegetable stock actually gets worse the longer you simmer it because I don't know, the flavor of the vegetable kind of changes to me. Um, I have, I don't know if anybody else out there has an instant pot, but I do love making the vegetable stock in that because it is a pressure cooker. So it's totally contained. It keeps all the flavor within. That is kind of one of my favorite uses for that appliance. Um, but I also just like making it the old fashioned way too. So I think our orzo is there. I'm gonna see if I can get I'm going to move, I don't know if you can see it, and I want everyone to see what it looks like, so I'm going to move my computer a bit. This is kind of the stage that it's at. And now I'm going to, whoops, just make sure that's there. Okay, good. Now I'm going to add in our cream that we made and just get all that in. It's quite rich, like I think, People are surprised that this is a no dairy kind of outing. So as you stir it in, you can see it's really kind of creaming up this mixture. And that's that. And then we have the broccoli that we sauteed earlier and it's kind of got to the perfect doneness just sitting there. We're gonna put that back in. Give it a little stir and I have all of my parsley. And then at this point, I'm going to add fresh lemon juice. The flavor of fresh lemon juice, I find it dissipates really quickly. So anytime I'm cooking a dish that features lemon, 
I like to add it right at the very end, right before I'm serving so that I keep that flavor intact. And this recipe calls for about a tablespoon. Um, some people might be more sensitive to the lemon the acidity, so you can just use less. I quite like it. So that goes in. And from here, I'm gonna use a bit more pepper. And we're just stirring all of that to combine. And this is looking, I haven't had my dinner yet, so I'm very hungry. Um, <laughs> I usually eat at five o'clock too. And I was like, no, I can wait. I can wait until whatever. I can't wait. <laughs> it looks delicious. Yeah, I'll get, a, I'll get a closer look of it here. That's kind of the finished product. Mm -hmm. It does look delicious. Yeah, it's so creamy. It's so surprising. I'm just going to show a plated version of it. What I would do with that. We'll be right over. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. You inspired me to pour a glass of wine. Oh my gosh. I was thinking of doing it, but I was like, I should wait until the class is over. <laughs> no, please go ahead. <laughs> and thank you for those tips of roasting the vegetables for the vegetable stock. I would never have thought of that. You can even roast them in the oven and then add them into your pot of stock. But like, I like to do it in the pot because you get caramelization on the bottom of the pot and yeah. then you can deglaze it with water or you can even use wine at that step if you want a bit of acidity for your stock, like depending on what you're making. So, so that how do you do it in the Instant Pot? In the Instant Pot, I will do the same thing. I'll put it on the saute function. Yeah. I'll get the caramelization going, same thing. And then I pour in my water seal the lid and I will do manual high pressure for 20 minutes and okay. then a natural pressure release. And then when it naturally releases, take the lid off, it's ready. Perfect. Okay, so I have to sneeze, I'm sorry. That's why I'm kind of, I think I'm okay. So this is the finished dish, looks like that. I have made ahead of time, I make this kind of savory sprinkle. I can bring it up to the camera. It's finely ground, just whatever nut you want. I use sliced almonds. Some of that nutritional yeast that we talked about that's really savory, a little bit of salt and a little bit of garlic powder. And I just grind it up in my food processor. And this is kind of like, it doesn't completely replace Parmesan cheese, but it gives you that kind of savory, little salty sprinkle on top that sometimes you miss when you're vegan and not having Parmesan cheese. So I put that on top and probably a little bit of extra pepper because I just broccoli and black pepper is just the best to me. I love it so much. And I'll put like a nice little drizzle of olive oil just to finish it. This is optional, it's optional, but I like it. And then, and you could do like a little chili flake on top of that if you want. And that's it. Yeah. That's our dish. That looks awesome. It's pretty easy. Really it all happened in one thing and turned out pretty good. So that's that. If anyone has any questions or anything, let me know. This came together a little bit faster than I thought because I think we were supposed to go to seven something, but I picked the rest of it too quick. But... I can't wait to try it. Yeah, I'll pass, pass it around. I know. <laughs> it looks so good. I have the recipe on my site. Um, and I have actually another orzo recipe on my site. It's a butternut squash orzo. And we kind of make a cream again with that one, but we make it with roasted butternut squash as well. So it's really mm. delicious. And I just put some crispy roasted Brussels sprouts on top of that. It's yummy. And it's like really nice for fall, which is coming up. Although it feels like summer lately, it's been so hot. But for when the time comes, it's a nice kind of variation on this idea. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Laura, how many does that feed? I would say this pot, like, I mean, my partner and I were very big eaters. So like, I would say this will give us like dinner and leftovers for lunch tomorrow. Perfect. I think you could do like four to six, depending on what 
what else you're serving or if like there's kids in the mix that, you know, may not eat as much. Um, I'd say four to six. Mm -hmm. Leftovers are perfect. Oh yeah. For lunch. Yeah. Yeah. We love that. Especially with like, we've been like, I always work from home, but my partner has been working from home more. So it's kind of nice to just plan for that the night before, like what's going to be the lunch and it's just ready. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Any more questions for Laura? Anything at all. It doesn't have to be about this orzo. Anything. <laughs> so Laura will be back on October 12th and then again, November 16th. So if anybody wants to get the recipes ahead of time for next time you want to cook along with her, that would be fun too. Mm -hmm. um, I have the recipe. I mean, I can email it or if anybody emails me, I can email it to them because I think most of you are probably from either Pelham or West Lincoln. So I don't know. How, I mean, if you email me at the library, it's Annie Fer A. Ferguson at wellandlibrary.ca and I can send you the recipe. But I think I did send it to Lorraine at, at West Lincoln and Mel at Pelham. So they should have it already. Yes. And Mel, Mel gave us the link. Oh, she, oh, just for this? To the website. Oh, sure. where it was posted. Oh, okay, sure. So you yeah. have a recipe then? We do. Okay. Or I do. Okay. So Annie, yes. I don't. All I got was an email from you um, with the Zoom link. Oh, okay. I will, yeah. um, anybody that registered with me, I'll send it out. I thought I had already done that, but maybe I forgot. So for next time, I'll make sure I send it out ahead of time. So if you want to get all your things and cook with Laura, that would be fun too. I mean, yeah, usually with that, it's nice if you have it kind of, I tend to have a lot of it chopped up ahead of time. So that is like helpful, but I know not everyone has time for that. So like either way, we'll just go at a pace that works for everyone. Um, and also like you can just Google, if you Google, my website is thefirstmess.com. If you just Google first mess and lemon orzo, you will get it. It will be the top Google search result. So if you forget to email Andy about it or whatever, it's all there for you. Laura, what was that called? First mess? Thefirstmess.com is the website. Okay. Yeah. And then if you just like want to Google for just that recipe, you can do first mess lemon orzo and you'll get it. And we do I don't think it was a mess. What's that? I don't think it's a mess at all. No, I'm actually, <laughs> that's the funny thing about it is I'm, I'm a very tidy cook. Like, <laughs> I clean as I go. I'm like really mean about it. When people are cooking with me, I'm like, you should clean that. <laughs> you know, I've had my website for 10 years. I can't, I can't change it. At this no, point. everybody knows you. Yeah. <laughs> do we, do we know what the menus are for the October and November events? I haven't decided. Oh, we're not. Okay. I haven't decided. I'm leaning towards for the October one. I have this amazing, well, I think it's amazing. It's my own recipe, but it's a butternut squash chili with mm. quinoa and black beans. It's so it's easy. Again, it's a very easy recipe, but it's like super comforting. It's like a nice little twist on chili. I have like some smoky chipotle peppers in the recipe. Oh, yeah. So nice with the squash. Like it just tastes so good. Maybe we could do like a little like savory corn muffin on the side with it or something Ooh. i'm leaning i'm leaning toward that right now so. mm -hmm. sounds okay. good and where's sound your fun. cookbook available um it's available at the library yeah, but you can yeah. also you can also get it through indigo chapters um like amazon has it anywhere that sells books there's a really great small bookstore in st catherine's called someday books hmm. and they sell it as well um, and they're great. They're a great bookstore. But yeah, anywhere that sells books, they have it. Thank you. Well, shall we let Laura have her dinner? <laughs> yeah. Before it gets cold? <laughs> no, like, I don't care if it's cold. It's fine. That doesn't bother me, but I am hungry. But yeah, no <laughs> questions or anything at all. Like, I'll see you on the next one when we'll probably make chili. So mm -hmm. that sounds awesome, Laura. Looking yeah. forward to everyone for coming. Yeah, this is my first time doing it and I really enjoyed it. So thank you. Okay. Join us again if you can. Yeah. Great. Yeah, my kids are vegan. So it's, um, I'm always looking for something new. 
Oh, okay. Right. That's yeah. well, definitely, it's hard sometimes. Right. And like, sometimes you factor in people being maybe a picky eater or people who don't necessarily eat vegan, but they all eat together. It's mm-hmm. a lot. It's a lot to juggle. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> so well, thank, thank you. you so much, Laura. Thank you everyone. I hope everyone has a really good night. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. We'll see you at the next one. It'll be great. Okay. Bye, everyone. Have a good evening, everyone. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.